Father, thank you for your mighty power. Thank you that you are always good to us, that you're always kind and you're always causing your grace to abound in our lives and we worship you this morning. Even when we don't deserve it, in particular when we don't deserve it, you make a point of loving us and drawing us back into your presence. So we stand in awe of you this morning. Father, if there's someone here this morning who is sick, if there's someone here this morning who is oppressed, someone here this morning struggling because of the storms of life around them, Lord, I thank you right now in this moment. You cause healing to flow through their bodies. You cause peace to overwhelm them. And you cause your amazing grace to abound in them. Father, we stand in awe. Father, we thank you. You are a miracle-working God. And because you love us, we're expectant this morning. Father, I thank you for Jacques and Ajani today. I thank you right now that Jacques is experiencing a miracle healing in his brain. I thank you for supernatural healing that is taking place right now. We give you praise, Father, those who are here today trusting you for a breakthrough, for a turnaround anointing. We release our faith in Jesus' name. And we lift our hands to praise you. We lift our hands to thank you this morning. And we welcome you here, Holy Spirit. You are the great teacher of the church. And as we lift up Jesus this morning, we thank you. That as we look at the scriptures this morning, you'll cause Jesus to become so real to us that you would unveil the mysteries of his grace and his love in a new dimension. In Jesus' name. And everyone agreed, said... Amen. If you believe it, give the Lord a good praise in the house today. Now, just before you seated, we just want to welcome everyone for the first time online, live. Congratulations. Thank you for joining us today. And from all, all of us here at Ramah South Coast, we give you a wonderful welcome wherever you're watching in the world today. Come on, let's give them a welcome. God bless you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. And we are so grateful to be at your service this morning. And it really is our passion and our mission as a local church to be at your service. So our prayer for you today is that you'll feel loved, you'll feel blessed, and that the Word of God will come alive in your heart this morning. Now, if perhaps you are visiting us for the very first time this morning, I'm going to invite you to please raise your hand. If you didn't already receive a welcome brochure, we would love to give you one, and we'd like to give you a little gift so you remember your first visit to our church. God bless you over there. Good to have you with us today, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Someone right at the back there on the left-hand side, God bless you over here sitting here. Come on, church. Welcome them right at the back there. If you'll just raise your hand until we get to you. There we go. Right over here, Richard. There we go. Thank you so much. If you'll just flip that open, you'll see there's a section there we've provided for you. If you'd like to take a moment and just complete that, then you can tear it off and you can hand that in at the info bar after the service so that we know you were here. Please indicate if we could either send you an email or phone you. We'd love to speak to you and just find how you enjoyed the service and answer any questions you might have about the church. Also, the other sections for you to keep so you can connect with our church. And you can find out all about us if you go to our website, rfcfc.com. We would love uh, to connect with you. And you can find out about our vision and our mission and everything that we're busy with as a local church. You can also go to the resource page, download the podcast for free and the teaching notes. They're uploaded every Monday. Now, if you're here today and you haven't yet completed a census form, we started our census, I think, about four weeks ago, and this is to just reset or rebuild our database after COVID, 
also gives you a chance to correct any of your details that might have changed over the last three to five years. So if you haven't yet filled in a census form, would you raise your hands? If you see this as your local church, then we need every single person to fill it in. If you are watching online, if you go to our website, there is a link. Or if you send us an email or WhatsApp, we will definitely send the link to you. You can complete it and then email it to us. Thank you so much for being part of that. Well, this morning, uh, very excited to go to the Word of God, and if you'd like to turn with me uh, in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to start an interesting and exciting part of our series much more this morning. Now, don't forget, if you have the YouVersion Bible app on your phone, you can go to the events page, you can open up a live event there, and you'll see the teaching notes and scriptures are there if you'd like to follow and even take your own notes down. You're so welcome to do that. Uh, Just before we dig into the Word of God, just a little bit around our house news. Don't forget, on the 9th of March at half past six, we'll be having a midweek service. We're calling it our small group harvest event. It It is an open invitation to everyone in the church to come along that Wednesday evening. We're going to have an amazing time. Starting at half past six, there'll be muffins and free coffee and tea available. And then we'll have live praise and worship an incredible worship experience. We'll be sharing the word and we'll be telling you about our small groups and what the next devotional theme will be. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Please come along and think about who you can invite who is not yet a Christian or maybe hasn't been serving God or going to church. Invite them. It's a wonderful opportunity to do that. Then don't forget, we're very excited to invite everyone in our church to our church social. That'll be taking place on the public holiday, the 21st of March from 9 o'clock. Uh, it's 10 rand per person. You register at the info bar. You might have already registered and paid in December when we were rained out. All you need to do is go along to the info bar and just let them know you will still be coming. It's going to take on the form of a picnic or a bring and bry, whichever you prefer. So bring your picnic basket, bring your meat and your salads. We will light the fires. Bring your own umbrella. Bring your towels. There's a swimming pool. Bring your children. We've got a whole lot of fun lined up, and we're really going to have a good day together. Then also, we'd like to just congratulate all the ladies this morning on their very first event in two years. And I believe they had an absolute blast as they conquered the mountains in their lives. Hopefully not the men. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for all our ladies. Well done. And uh, I believe you had an absolute wonderful time. If I can ask all the ladies to mark this date down, the 7th of May will be your next ladies event 10 o'clock to around about 12 o'clock. So come along, and all the men, you can book your golf tee off time. Hallelujah. Come on, look at the person next to you. Say, You look awesome this morning. If you're sitting by yourself, say, I look amazing. All right, the subtitle of my message this morning is Who's in Your Corner? Who's in Your Corner? And here in Ephesians chapter 6, I want to read it out of the Amplified Classic. It says this, In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with Him, draw your strength from Him, that strength which His boundless might provides. Notice the Apostle Paul writing to the local church in Ephesus says this, In conclusion, as a matter of fact, in the King James, he says, Finally, brethren, and sistren, if he was writing today, he would include them for sure. Um, and what he, what he was really saying is, listen, the book of Ephesians is an incredible book. If you go study it, uh, I tell you what, you'll unpack some incredible truths that will empower you in your Christian life. In Ephesians 1, he speaks about everything that we have in Christ and that it's by God's grace that we receive this free gift. And then he goes on in Ephesians 1 from verse 14, he prays this incredible prayer for and over the church. And I would encourage you to pray that prayer for yourself and your family every single day or as often as you can. Then in Ephesians chapter 2, he continues to expound on the incredible value of knowing who you are in Christ. He flows that all the way through to Ephesians chapter 3. So chapters 1 to 3 speak about everything that we are in him. 
And then in chapter 4, he opens chapter 4 and he says this, Now walk worthy of your calling. And so in chapters 4, 5, and 6, he starts to unpack the practical side of our, of our Christian life. How to live every day. How to walk together. How to build a great marriage. How to honor your parents. How to live your life. So 1, 2, and 3 is the inward. 4, 5, and 6 is the outward. And then in chapter 6, verse 10, he says, finally. In other words, if you study that word out in the Greek, he says, let me bring it all together and let me show you how important this is. So this is a very important teaching we're entering into. And today we're going to dig into the part of much more where we talk about spiritual warfare. And I want you to know today there are a lot of misconceptions about spiritual warfare. There's a lot of misunderstanding about the armor of God and how it's applied. And there's a lot of great teaching out there. And so over the next few weeks, we want to unpack that. And I think we're going to climb the mountain. We're going to conquer the mountain maybe from a slightly different perspective. So please, if you've had good teaching on warfare, or if you've had any teaching on spiritual warfare, please put that aside and don't switch off right now. Because I know we tend to do that, especially when we've been serving God for a while. Like, okay, I know this. This isn't for me. No, this is for all of us today. Because I want you to know the reality this morning is there is a war going on around you in the invisible. You can't see it with your physical eyes, but I want you to know it is very real. Say, it is real. Once you are born again, You automatically have an arch enemy and he is dedicated to your destruction. He is the enemy, listen carefully, he's the enemy of every woman, every man and every child, whether you're a Christian or not. Because Satan is out to destroy mankind because mankind is the clear representation of God on this earth. In Genesis, it says we were created in his image and his likeness. So I want you to know the enemy is no respecter of persons. His design and his purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his mandate. And so when you start to understand this, you realize that Satan hates people because God made them in his own image. It's like the picture, maybe you've watched a movie uh, of the guy who is dissed by his girlfriend. And then the next scene goes to his man cave and he has his dartboard there with a picture of her as the bullseye. It's like the gentleman who's in partnership with someone in the business, in the movie, and how you know this partner steals the business away, wins the war, and for the rest of his life this other partner is out to destroy him but never succeeds. That's who the enemy is. That's his mandate. He hates mankind. And that's why you see the chaos you see in the world today. People say, well, you know, why does God allow that? No, God didn't allow it. You did. Very quiet. Go and read 1 Corinthians. It says, the world is under the sway of the enemy. We hand it over the mandate to him. And so here's the thing. When you become born again, you become his arch enemy because you now have the authority and power to rule over him and to live your life in victory and to make sure this world becomes what it should be. That's the battle we're in. Can you say amen? Come on, church. Now, I really wanted to rush through my introduction because I wanted to get to the good stuff. But I'm not going to do that. We're going to go through this line upon line, precept upon precept, because we're going to remind ourselves why we're here. Amen? And I think sometimes that's important for us to do. So jump quickly to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. We're going to go through quite a lot of scripture, but you'll see the benefit of it as we dig into this teaching over the next few weeks. In the Amplified Classic, verse 15 says this, And I will put enmity between you and the woman between your offspring and her offspring, he will bruise and tread your head underfoot, and you will lie in wait and bruise his heel. So right at the beginning, after Adam and Eve had sinned and fallen, God comes and listen to this conversation. He's speaking to Satan, and he's speaking to the woman. 
And they're saying this is what the world's going to be as a result of the fall of man. But listen carefully. There's something that's going to happen. And have a look here at this incredible thing found here under the inspiration of this Holy Spirit. God is present. Satan is present. And the woman is present. In this particular thing, God is speaking to the woman and he's speaking to Satan. But look what he says. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He will bruise your head. Who's the he? Because he's talking to the woman. He's not talking to Satan. So he's addressing the woman and Satan, and he says, he will bruise your head. Right there is the gospel of Jesus Christ in Genesis chapter 3. Because the he is in capital letters. He's talking about Jesus will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel because he's going to tramp on you and he's going to squash your plan to destroy the earth. Hallelujah. So right here at the onset, we see spiritual warfare is real and the way you're going to win it is through him, Jesus. Now, the direct reference, if you go study this in the Hebrew, the direct reference, Reference to this verse is Galatians 4. Let's go look at it quickly. Galatians 4. I'm going to read this all the way to verse 7, but I'm going to read it in the NLT second edition. It says, but when the right time came, say the right time. God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that, we could, uh, so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba, Father. Just say this with me. Say, Abba, Father. Daddy God. Because we're in Christ, we have a daddy. Can you say amen? We have a heavenly father who loves us with an incredible love. And then verse 7 says, you are no longer a slave, but you're God's own child. And since you are his child, you are an heir. Say, I'm an heir. Amen. You have been inherited God's grace, and you have become accepted in the beloved. And then finally, have a look at John 10, 10 in the Amplified Classic. It says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. What is God's heart for you today? God wants you to have life to the full until it overflows. Amen? If you don't have that yet, don't be discouraged. God ain't finished with you. Can you say amen? There is still a promise for your life. There is still a fulfillment in your life. And if you'll realize this morning, the enemy you need to defeat is not God, but you and the enemy, Satan, you are well on your way to experiencing victory. You see, sometimes, you things hap sometimes we see things happen to us that are out of the ordinary. Have any of you ever experienced that? When you notice these things are happening regularly and you have tried unsuccessfully to deal with them in the natural, realize today that is spiritual warfare. And you cannot deal with it in the natural, you have to deal with it in the spiritual. Now, I don't have time to go there today. We may find time. But if you study the life of Jesus in the gospel, you'll see he went through several storms. Remember the storms Jesus went through with his disciples? Do you know what? Some of the disciples went through storms. And what we learn through that is that you deal with storms differently according to where they come from and what they are. Some storms you speak to them. Some storms you just leave and you go on to the other side. Other storms, you've got to walk on them. And then some storms, the ones we don't like, like Paul went through, you just hang on for dear life until you get to shore. Sorry. <laughs> but how you know, that's just a picture of life. And so here's the thing. As we grow in God, the, the expected outcome for this teaching is that we'd have a sensitivity and a wisdom in our lives so we'd know what storm we're facing because then you know how to have victory over it. You know, there's a time in my life I had so much teaching about spiritual warfare, I would get up every morning and if I didn't put on each piece of armor, I felt undressed. 
But I realized I was so consumed with putting the armor on, but I didn't know how to use it. So what's the point of putting the armor on if you don't know how to apply it to your life when the attack comes? So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to break it up a little bit differently as the Holy Spirit directs us. So let's dig in again. I want to read Ephesians 6, just from verse 10 to 12 in the Message Bible, and have a look at the clarity that it starts to bring out in our lives. In verse 10 it says, and that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So take everything the Master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to you so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that you'll walk away from and forget in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. How many know there's a good wake-up call? Because how many know when Monday comes, I'll forget that Man United drew one all? I'll forget that the sharks whipped Benetton yesterday. And how you know, I have to step into real life and face the challenges of the week. And what Paul's trying to say, he's trying to say, listen, this isn't some kind, kind of contest that tomorrow will be gone. This is a life and death fight until Jesus comes back for you. Hallelujah. And you're going to see today, we already have the victory. So we don't have to be worried. We don't have to be concerned. But here's the the concept I think Paul wanted us to get. The Bible isn't a self-help book that teaches you how to cope with life and just get by till Jesus comes. Oh, I'm just holding on, Pastor. Just holding on until I can get to heaven. God doesn't want you to hold on. He wants you to live in victory. And so this Bible is a manual of how you and I can go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from victory to victory, from one challenge to the next challenge, victorious and overcoming. That's what God wants for your and my life. So here's my headings this morning. Number one, don't just cope, walk in victory. Ephesians 6.10, and we're going to start in verse 10 this morning, and we're just going to go verse for verse over the next couple of weeks. Verse 10 in the Passion Translation says this, Now, my beloved ones, I've saved these most important truths for lost. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Now I know, how many know, he makes this sound like a Superman movie. And the reality is when you face stuff in your life, how many know, we don't feel like Superman. Actually, most of the time we feel like Clark Kent. Nerdy, weak, and we've got our glasses on and we don't know where we're going. Hello? But here's the reality. That's the point he's trying to make. Because the reality is, Jesus is the only superhero. And he's in your corner. Hence my title this morning. Who's in your corner? Say, God is in my corner. Come on, say it loud. Say, God is in my corner. Here's what I sense in my heart for us as a local church. I think many of us, in this local church have faced ongoing battles, deal with ongoing strongholds, family, relationships, finance, business, situations, growth, different areas. And it seems like we get to a point and it looks great and then we stumble back. Not saying we're missing it, But in the spiritual realm, I believe God wants to give us an an abundant supernatural victory in those areas as we move forward this year into the more that he has for us. Can you say amen? And if you can catch that this morning, he's going to give us some tools we can use to accomplish that. How many of you can relate to what I'm saying? You're doing great. You're blessed. You're going on. Life is good. You're happy. You're thankful. God's doing well. But there's these few things like you just don't quite get the breakthrough. Am I speaking to someone this morning? 
Is someone listening to me this morning? Just give me a little wave if that's for you this morning because I know it's for me. And I believe as a church over the next few months and year, we're gonna see that breakthrough in that area that's gonna launch us to the next level of who we're gonna be, what we're gonna do and how we're gonna accomplish it. And you know what? People are gonna stand back and say, wow, that could only be Jesus. And they'll be drawn to the light because out there, this year is gonna get darker. We're moving in the end times. It's going to get darker. It's going to get worse. ain't going to get better. But in the church, if you're born again, if you're in Christ, if you keep your armor on, if you stay connected to the one who is strong and mighty, you will move in victory. You will move in supernatural favor. You will move in supernatural prosperity. You will move in supernatural wisdom. You'll be able to speak into people's lives with an accuracy that will astound them and bring them back to God. Because Jesus is restoring his church. It's prophetic for the end times. Have a look at Philippians 4 verse 6, Passion Translation. It says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer through each day. Offering your faithful request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Say this with me. I'm not just going to cope. I'm going to overcome. I'm not just going to cope. I'm going to overcome. And you know, church, it's a mindset that we need to grasp in our lives. That even when I get up tomorrow and I'm facing the biggest mountain, I need to summit that final peak. I can get up and in the midst of that stress and that pain that's surrounding me, I have a peace and a confidence that says today I'll scale that mountain. Today I will overcome. Today I'll take the next step towards the victory that God has for my life. And that's what I believe Paul wanted us to see here in verse 10. Because notice in verse 7 of Philippians 4, he goes on and he says, in the Passion Translation, he says, Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Immediately we get insight into one of the pieces of armor, peace. We'll look at that later. But here's the import. God says you are able to overcome and his word shows us how to experience that victory over the storms of life. This is the difference between God and what he wants for you and the devil and what he wants to do to you. How many know God's a gentleman? He needs an invitation. The devil's a bully. He just wants to push his way through. And when you see the spirit of what's happening, you can understand where that attack is coming from, why it's happening. And so God gives you insight. If someone's trying to bully, what's the best thing to do with a bully? Pop him in the nose before he can blink. Yeah. (laughs) Philippians 4 verse 13 says in the Amplified, I have strength. Say, I have strength. For all things in Christ who empowers me. I love it in the Amplified. I am ready for anything and equal to anything. Through him who infuses inner strength into me, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Hallelujah. That is verse 10 in an absolute nutshell. So the difference today between you and the world is this. Once you believe in Christ, you have everything you will ever need, everything to live your life in the place God wants you to live it. Listen carefully, church. This is the mindset that needs to change. Doesn't matter where you are today and what you're facing. You are victorious. You know, when you see that... (laughs) You can't bet stop because you'll keep doing what you need to do. You'll keep moving where you need to move. Why? Because God's grace. You're infused with the strength that comes from your union with him and not from what you're facing. Say, I'm more than enough. All right, now remember Ephesians 1 verse 3? 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. What does that word say there? It says, has. Have we got it up on the screen? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Who? Has. Is that present tense? Is it future tense? No, it's past tense. It's already happened. If it already happened, what are you waiting for? What am I waiting for? Step into it. You see, now listen carefully. That's spiritual warfare. Because the enemy wants to get you to think you don't have it, so you're waiting to have it so that you can be blessed. When God says you already have it and you are already blessed. So spiritual warfare happens here in the arena of the mind in terms of what we think and believe and allow to impact our lives. Notice the tense is past tense, so it is already yours. You see, the world can boast today about having a lot of things, having a lot of money, having the big mansions. But here's the reality. You can have a seven-bedroom house and not be able to get one night's peaceful sleep in any of those bedrooms, and you're not blessed. Amen? You can have a billion rand in your account and you can know that every resource you have is at your disposal and still you're depressed, relentless, and you've got no good relationships. And you're not blessed. Listen here, church. If you're in Christ today, you are rich. You are highly favored. You are awesome. You are able all you've got to do is go into the phone booth and get transformed. Okay, if you, you've probably got to be older to remember the first Superman movie. Clark Kent always had to find a phone booth so no one could see him change. I mean, the whole movie, think how silly it is. The whole movie, everything's supernatural except when he's got to change. He's got to be in a phone booth. So, have a look at Proverbs chapter 30 in this context, and you'll start to see how powerful this is for you and I. In verse 5, it says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his word, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. Two things I've requested of you. Deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you, and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of God. You see, you're a powerful child of God, and you have everything you need in Christ. You have eternal life. You have the promises of God written in the Bible. They are yours. And you have the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life. You are complete you are perfect you are amazing this morning no amens okay remember now it says be strong in the power of his might in the strength of his strength and so what we're talking about let's just read it again uh, Ephesians 6 verse 10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So here's the thing we've got to start thinking about. When I say to God, God, I can do this. God says, fine, then you do it. But when I say to God, God, I need your help. I don't know how to do this. I really need you. God steps up and says, awesome, watch me and see how I do this. And you know, that's our God. He loves, he loves to step into your life and work out the messes and the storms and the situations and the circumstances. But you know what? He needs us to say, Lord, I need your help. And you know what I've discovered in my life? I need his help. I need his help every day. You'll laugh just now when I sh share this with you. I really need his help every day. And he loves it when we depend on him. So how do I stand strong? I stand in the power of his might. In the natural, I'm weak. In the natural, I'm Clark Kent. In the natural, I don't know how to deal with my wife. I don't know how to deal much. I don't know how to pastor church. But when I step into Jesus, 
I'm complete. I'm full. I'm able. So it's a step of faith, believing God's love for me is able to provide for me what I need. Amen? Say, I'm amazing this morning. No, no, I'm amazing this morning. That's where you point at me and say, you amazing, Pastor. (sighs) Come on, church. Colossians 2, verse 14 and 15. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. Say they wiped out. Which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Listen, having disarmed. Say disarmed. Wiped out. Disarmed. Principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. This word disarmed in the Greek means this. To take something away completely. To sink as to never see again. To strip away wholly. In other words, it gives you the appearance, sometimes you look at things and they have a threat. And you think, wow, this person's going to destroy me. This situation, they have an appearance and a threat, but in reality they are disarmed. It is an empty gun. Amen? That's what disarmed means. It might look like it's going to do harm, but it has no bullets. Here's the enemy. He comes with a gun. It looks real. It's a threat. You feel intimidated, but here's the reality. It's disarmed. And that's what spiritual warfare is. The enemy trying to get you to believe that this thing is too big, that this thing will destroy you, that this thing will prevent you from being who you need to be. But listen, he disarmed it for you. And so you step into Jesus, and you'll see now, this is so exciting. When you say, I can, you're relying on your human strength. But when you say, I cannot, but you can, you step into his strength. And you know what? When you rest in that foundation, you'll experience the power of God supernaturally showing up in your circumstances. Now listen to this. Psalm 18, verse 29 to 30 in the NLT. This is David. In your strength, I can crush an army. With my God, I can scale any wall. God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield to all those who look to him for protection. So here's the thing. Manny and I are doing CrossFit, and we've now entered the the world open, which is over the next three weekends. So we go Friday morning, and the workout is you've got to scale a wall upside down. They call them wall walks. So you start on your stomach, you go up onto your haunches, and then you've got to walk backwards, walk your wall, your feet up the wall, until your chest touches the wall. So it's like a handstand. Then you've got to walk back down onto your stomach. You've got to do that three times. Then you've got to do your snatches, your box jumps, and you do as many of those as you can in 15 minutes. Now, if you're 55 and over, you're allowed to scale that exercise. So you only have to do half a wall walk which is what we did, and it went well, and we did great. I'm going to go back on Monday and try again. But here's the thing. I'm sitting yesterday, I'm like, I'm sure, I'm sure I can do this properly. And I want to, at 55, do this properly. So I'm sitting there thinking about, how can I scale this wall? How can I do this? And guess what? I'm busy looking at my sermon notes, and this verse jumps out at me. By you, I can scale any wall. How you know, suddenly my faith was challenged. I had my costume on. I went and put my tackies on, and I'm like, I'm going to do this. Come back next week, and I'll tell you what happened. My faith is still in action, okay? <laughs> I tried twice, and I'm, I'm not there yet, but next year I'm going to come back with a vengeance. <laughs> Here's the thought. Whatever your giant is today, When you begin to see yourself as God's beloved, when you step into his might and strength, listen, your giant has to fall. Do you know the story of David and Goliath? Do you know what Goliath's name means? It means exiled one. One stripped of power, 
and stripped of their resources. It's a picture of Satan. Do you know what David means? My beloved. What did God say to Jesus when he was baptized? My beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What does God say to you when you step into Christ? You are his beloved and no Goliath can take you out. Amen. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All right, let's drop into verse 11. I'll introduce this and we'll pick it up next week. Did you get some help this morning? Matthew 6 verse 11, look what it says. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Say this with me. Put it on. Come on, say it with passion. Put it on. So here's my next heading. You've got to put on God's armor. How do we stand against the devil? What instructions has God given us to empower us to stand in his might so that we see the victory we're trusting God for? You see, the answer lies in the armor of God. The Bible tells you to take up the armor of God. God tells you to put his armor on. Listen, it's the same armor Jesus wore when he walked on this earth and then he left for heaven. And you know what? He left the armor for you and I. When you step into the armor, the devil doesn't know who he's fighting because you look just like Jesus. You know the beautiful thing about the Superman uniform? It's got a built-in six-pack. Oh, yeah. My time's up. It's got built-in muscles and good looks. Okay, I added the last part in. But, so listen, you could be a bit flabby and not have the greatest body, but when you put the Superman suit on, guess what? You've got guns and you've got a six-pack. When you step into the armor of God, Maybe in your own strength, you're puny, weak, and you don't have it together. When you step into Christ, guess what? You have a six-pack. You have guns, and you definitely have the good looks. Can you say amen? And nothing can stand against you this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you for giving us your amazing armor. Thank you that you love us so much that you didn't leave us as orphans, but you gave us your Holy Spirit. So while every head is bowed, every eyes closed, if you're here today, you're not born again. You've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You can leave here today in Christ, wearing him and his righteousness. If that's you and you say, man, I want to be saved. I want to give my life to Jesus today. I want to leave here change. You might have gone to church all your life, but going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Accepting Jesus does. So if that's you this morning, even if you're watching online, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we would love to pray with you this morning. This can be the turnaround in your life. This can make all the difference to what you're facing. So if that's you today or online, if you'll just raise your hand right now. God bless you, sir. Is there someone else who'd like to join them? If you raised your hand, would you just stand where you are? Just move to the back of our building there. We want to pray with you, sir. We're so glad for your decision. If you're online and you just, maybe you're sitting in your lounge, but you're standing up on the inside, well, just pray this prayer with me right now. We would love for you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Thank you so much, ma'am. That is amazing. We're going to pray with you. Church, would you pray with us and with everyone online? Just say this. Be sincere in your heart. Say, Father God, I believe today that Jesus is your son, that he died on the cross for me, and I receive him into my heart as my Lord and Savior. You raised him from the dead, and I receive him in my life, and you're going to raise me into a new life. Thank you for saving me today. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, you are now born again and you're washed in the blood of Jesus. If you'll go with our leaders, we're gonna just take you to a place of prayer. We're gonna give you a Bible. We're gonna give you a beautiful little book that will help you in this decision you've just made. Let's put our hands together as they go today. Now, if you're online, if you prayed that prayer today, would you please send us an email or a WhatsApp We'd love to know that you made that decision and we will send you a Bible and a booklet so that you can take the steps in serving God in the correct way. We look forward to hearing from you. Church, let's stand together. We're so grateful for you today. As you leave, the offering buckets will be at the doors. 
please, if you want to sow your seed, we'd appreciate it. Don't forget we have our car guard fund where you can put your tips for our car guards. If you need to know anything about our church, see Mark and Elaine at the info bar. They'd love to speak to you. If you're online and you want to sow, the snap scan code is appearing on the screen right now. Or you can do an EFT by going to our website. God bless you. We love you. Have a great day. We can't wait to see you online, half past six on Thursday for our communion and Bible study. We love you. We're praying for you.